Updated COVID-19 boosters are now available, said to target the dominant Omicron variant. The CDC recommending the updated booster shot for people 12 and older. But as this latest round rolls out, one of the nation's top experts on infectious diseases is also hinting at the next phase of protection. In the absence of a dramatically different variant, we likely are moving towards a path with a vaccination cadence similar to that of the annual influenza vaccine, with annual updated COVID-19 shots matched to the currently circulating strains for most of the population. So basically an annual shot like the flu shot, according to Dr. Fauci. Dr. Monica Gandhi is a professor and expert on infectious diseases with the University of California, San Francisco, joining us live tonight. Uh, let's start there. How soon before we have an annual COVID shot like the flu? So it's a great question because I'm not totally clear that we're going to need that. And this is not what any other country has yet indicated. I think a couple of good signs. We have not had a new variant since November 26, 2021. These are all subvariants: BA5, BA1, BA2, BA2, 121, subvariants of the same variant. That may mean that the virus is getting less likely to mutate because we have so much more population immunity. Good sign. Number two. Our hospitalizations and deaths, sometimes we misclassify them because people come in with more incidental, just swabbing in the nose, are staying low. Number three, who's most at risk for a severe breakthrough infection? Older people. So what Europe and the UK are recommending are booster shots for older people. And that's kind of how we do even for um, other boosters and other infectious diseases. So I'm not sure we're jumping the gun by saying that that we need annual booster shots or everyone does, I think older people are going to need them. How about this new booster? I mean, do people need it? And if so, when do they get it? So this new booster is basically BA4, which was kind of an old subvariant, BA5, which is the current subvariant, and then even the ancestral strain that we don't even have around anymore. For some reason, that's in there. And it's called a bivalent vaccine. And who needs it? Well, Number one, I still, again, I'm I'm pretty uh, more focused on an older population because only 70.7% of people over 65 have even gotten the third booster in our country. I'd like to see everyone getting more boosters who are older than 65. And then I think that younger, it would be if you have comorbidities, and you can certainly get it, there's no harm, but I think I would put my public health messaging on older people because they're the ones most at risk for severe disease, those over 65. And in terms of when to get it, I wrote a piece in time today, um, but I would uh, suggest that people look at kind of the data about you do have to space out boosters or your last time from infection to have a good response from the booster. So I would recommend six months since your last infection, say you got uh, Omicron in May, I'd wait till November, or your last booster, because if you give it too soon, you actually abrogate some of your immune response. Mm. And so for people who have had the virus over the summer, we heard lots of people were getting it. Um, yes. What about reinfection? So millions of people got Omicron, you're right, uh, in the United States, because this was such a transmissible variant. And I really would wait, say, say you got it in July, I would wait six months after you got your infection to get your booster. And in terms of reinfection, very unfortunately, the idea is could we stop all infections with the vaccine? The reason that's almost impossible is it doesn't generate all of the antibodies that we need up here in the nasal area, which is why we're looking at nasal vaccines as our next step to fight COVID-19 but they're brilliant at protecting you against severe disease, hospitalization, exactly what we were so scared about. So I don't think we're gonna be able to unfortunately stop all infections, even if we boost every year. That is just not what the vaccine does in terms of generating uh, antibodies up here. It does feel like we're in a much, much better place. Um, real quickly, um, the one thing that I've, I've wondered about for a while, pull back the curtain a little bit for us. What's happening behind the scenes with infectious disease experts and researchers to not only better understand the virus now and what we've gone through the last couple of years, but, but also any potential new variants? I mean, how do they investigate that and prepare us so that we're ready if something else happens? 
Exactly right, that we need to keep on doing genomic surveillance. And so the way that we look at that is if cases are increasing in a region, we should know that if we do wastewater surveillance, then go look at that region and do genomic surveillance. See if they're sequence it, see if it's BA5 or is it BA275, which we saw in India, but didn't really go anywhere. We will always be sequencing for new variants, but, and, and that's a very important WHO initiative. But I will say it's very interesting to not have seen a new completely different variant for almost 10 months. And there was a May stat news article that talked about this, that the virus may be less able to mutate when so much of the population has seen the virus or seen a vaccine. It makes it less likely to go crazy. And so I'm hoping we have enough population level immunity in the world that we're not going to see it go off shooting unless we get a variant from an animal. We may finally have the upper hand on this. Dr. Gandhi, appreciate it. Good information tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.